Hello and welcome to a video on Laplace transforms. In this video I'm going to talk about um, how to use Laplace transforms to solve ODEs and I'll start off just giving a bit of a general intro to what we know how to do already without them and what they um, add to our, our tool set. So suppose we have an ODE, so an inhomogeneous ODE, second order linear, let's say with constant coefficients. Uh, so second order linear ODE with constant coefficients. Inhomogeneous, right? Okay, so we don't need that there. All right, so um, right now what we know how to do is solve this directly when the inhomogeneity f of t is equal to, let's say something like e to the alpha t or cosine of beta t or um, a polynomial or any product of those. And we use the method of undetermined coefficients, muck. So we were able to go directly from an equation for y to y of t using that method. So what we're gonna start doing now is using transforms to solve those types of equations just to get established with the technique and figure out how it works. And then we're gonna be able to use it in more general cases. So. Um, well, the idea now is that we take the Laplace transform of the ODE and what that gives us is an algebraic equation for y, capital Y of S, which is the transform of the unknown function Y of T. And then we solve that, which is usually a much easier process than the parallel arrow above for solving the ODE directly. And then now we have y of s, we have to invert. So we do L inverse of y of s to get back our solution y of t. So we can go either side, uh, well, either directly across or three sides of a square for solving all the equations that we already know how to do. And that's where we'll start off. But the things that um, we can add using this technique is what happens when we have discontinuities in our function, for example. So if your f of t looks something like this, let's say it starts off uh, zero. Let's do this in a different color. So let's say it starts off zero here, and then it ramps up, and then drops off, and then continues at some constant level, and so on. So an f of t like this, we don't have any technique that will handle it. We could do it piecewise, but it becomes a little cumbersome to do that. And so we have this method, which is um, this Laplace transform uh, approach, which allows us to solve problems of that type. Okay, so let's go on and do an example that we already know how to do, but just to build some of the tools. So let's solve the equation y double prime plus 4y equals 0. So that's a fairly simple one. And um, we're going to have to impose initial conditions here. We won't really be able to use the Laplace transform method to, well, I guess we, we can leave y of 0 arbitrary and y prime of 0 arbitrary. But in general, uh, we need at least expressions for the initial conditions when we do Laplace transforms, and you'll see why in a minute. So um, first step in finding the solution using the Laplace transform is to take the transform of both sides of this equation. So we take the Laplace transform of y double prime plus 4y, and that's going to be equal to the Laplace transform of 0. So uh, first we remember, remember that we have linearity, so this is going to be the Laplace transform of y double prime plus, and again by linearity, we can pull that 4 out, and we have the Laplace transform of y double prime plus 4 times Laplace transform of y is equal to, and the Laplace transform of 0, uh, because that's just an integral of e to the minus st times 0, is obviously 0. Okay, so um, this one here is not too bad. That's just going to be 4 times uh, Laplace transform of y, which I'll call capital Y of s, and the Laplace transform of y double prime. So just a reminder from the previous video, uh, this one will come out to be s squared times y of s minus s 
y of 0, that's little y of 0, minus y prime of 0. And so um, this is exactly the step that gave us uh, algebraic equations, will always give us algebraic equations instead of differential equations because the Laplace transform of a derivative always will give me s times the, tr the, the Laplace transform of the function. And so that's how derivatives become algebraic expressions. So in this one here, we have y of 0 equal 1 and y prime of 0 equals 0. So that gives us s squared y of s minus s, and then y prime is 0 of 0. So now we have this expression as well. So now I can write down the algebraic equation for y of s, which is s squared times y of s minus s plus 4 times y of s, and that's equal to 0. So now this is the algebraic solve step. So we have uh, s squared plus 4 multiplied by y of s, and that's, I'll bring the s over to the other side. So I have all the y's on one side, and now I can solve for y of s, and that's equal to s over s squared plus So now we can refer back to our, um, our Laplace transforms that we've already calculated. This one is of the form s over quadratic, linear over quadratic, and that gives us trig functions in particular because the Laplace transform of the cosine omega times t is equal to s divided by omega squared plus s squared we can now write down the inverse transform of this right away. y of t is equal to cosine of 2t. Now we could have gotten that by other means, but this is a good illustration of how the method using Laplace transform works, and we'll um, generalize this to more and more complicated functions in subsequent videos.